Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make a character design for something more serious like a comic book or a video game. Um, because while you guys have seen a lot of character design from me for YouTube videos, uh, my process when it comes to something that's going to be a bit like more of a serious project um, is very different and I thought it might be helpful to anyone who's working on making character designs of their own. So the first thing that I do when I first start coming up with a story and I need character designs is I just do a lot of very loose sketches um, of them actually in the scenes that I'm imagining in my head. I don't start off with character sheets right away. Um, I find that it's way too hard to just sit down in front of a character sheet and immediately start coming up with like the outfit, the character's stature, the character's body type, and build. I find that that stuff is much easier to find when you're making sort of illustrations for them in their actual setting. The primary thing I try to think about is the character's verb, i.e. what the character will be doing the most of. This helps you with not only their outfit design, but it can inform some stuff about their physique and um, other factors like their lifestyle. Uh, now again, I don't worry overly about this. I want this character design to mostly be appealing to the eye and to feel right um, based on the story, but these kind of things can really help you add details when you're not really sure what to add. Um, and honestly, this design didn't come to me until I drew this sketch of her and then I finally knew what I wanted the clothes to look like. When I was creating characters back in the day, like back in my, I guess, DeviantArt days, um, a lot of the time I would actually just sort of sit down and immediately try to make a character sheet like this. And I didn't even really consider much about the story. So for example, this is one of the older character references um, I found that I made for myself. Um, this is a character that I made for a webcomic, so it was narrative focused, but there really wasn't any consideration um, about like what this character was wearing as far as to give us hints about like who he was. Um, it was all rule of cool, which is a phrase that uh, people use in the character design industry and in other creative industries to sort of, um, t it's, it's basically a way of showing the pre that the priority is for things to look cool uh, and they don't always have to have reasoning behind it. Now that sounds like a really negative thing, uh, but I actually think that the good balance of rule of cool and some more pragmatic design choices are actually the best. I really like when um, there's a balance because I do think that while true through rule of cool stuff like certain designs from Final Fantasy and <laughs> things like that can kind of start to be ridiculous and it takes away from the narrative sometimes. I also think that being way too like cinema sins about it and constantly looking everything um, through the lens of realism even when it's a creative media with a lot of stylization, I think that's also losing something. So uh, for me personally, I do try to give my characters items that they would actually use um, and I try to give them clothes that they can move in. How However, I also don't um, have an issue with adding things to them that I think just genuinely make them look better aesthetically. Uh, this is, you know, something that you're going to have to try to figure out is a balancing act um, that will really determine how your work ends up looking. Um, but for me, I really try to cut it like 50-50 um, and that's been working out quite well for me lately and I think it gives more substance to my designs than I used to have when I was younger. This character has changed so much since the first couple sketches I did of her. Originally, like I said, I was planning on this story being a game, and so it was okay for me to completely um, sort of put her face in shadows. I was originally going to have her whole expression be kind of hidden, and I think that that would have really worked in a game, but as soon as I decided I wanted to make a comic of this, it became really important that you could actually see her face and her expressions, because otherwise it would be not impossible, but very difficult to express a lot of the emotional nuances in the story without saying them out loud and I'm very much a show don't tell kind of um, person at least I, I try to be with my stories um, so that became a major change I was going to have to make. I also really wanted to make sure that her um, her sort of livelihood showed on her person. This is the part that I'm kind of talking about with showing the story on them. Um, I think that the character's primary verb or what they're primarily doing with their um, life and in the story is a really important thing to think about while you're designing them. So since this character is primarily in the business of like healing and um, helping with the wounds and stuff, I ended up giving her this little belt up at the front where you can see that she has holstered um, three different sizes of uh, the curved type of needle that veterinarians and doctors use to sew stitches. 
So once I was finally satisfied with the way she looked, you would think I would just jump straight into the next character, but actually as soon as I established what this character was going to look like, the most important thing was to try to draw the characters together. In fact, even in the earliest sketches, um, some of the other characters, I only drew them next to my main character so that I knew if they were going to play off each other visually in a way that made sense. Um, this really loose sketch here is the most recent and accurate version of them all together and I think it really helps me figure out how I need to change and adjust the other character's designs to work around her and to oppose her um, where it should. When you're telling stories with multiple characters, it's so important that they look distinct from each other, but also like they belong in the same world, the same universe, and the same story. Um, and that any major differences that you're choosing in their design sensibilities are uh, supported by the story. Um, you don't want characters to look out of place just because they look out of place. You want them to look out of place for a reason, because they are out of place. Um, so that's something that I tried to consider while I was designing these three next to each other. It also obviously gives the benefit of being able to show their different heights in relation to each other, which can make a big difference in how their designs are perceived. I wanted to work on the character who's most visually different from her next. Um, I just felt like that would be a good approach. And um, this character gave me a lot of trouble. As a lot of you guys know, I don't actually have almost any um, like human looking male characters in Unfamiliar. Um, and so I haven't done a male character design for a big project in quite a while, but I ended up really loving uh, his design. And the key thing that I tried to focus on with him was balancing interest interesting and simple um, aspects in his design. Now whenever you're going to be working on uh, anything as repetitive as a comic or an animation, it's important not to go too nuts and get too out of control with the details. So with certain characters, what I really like to do is have one focal point where I really just like let myself go wild and really enjoy a very sort of um, extreme or interesting part of the design. In this case, it is the teeth on his hood. Um, and and I really thought that this was important. It almost kind of looks like a bear trap around his head, which I find um, really visually interesting. And also the, the teeth are just kind of important for story reasons. Um, and then it has this asymmetrical cut across his chest with this cloak. I think it makes him look like an adventurer and um, it really works with who he is in the story. And then under that, because I've done so much um, sort of uh, over the top fantasy design in the cloak, I try to go really simple and just do nice non-distracting stuff other than that um, we're looking for like a stealthy long sleeve black shirt and uh, also dark colored pants that sort of taper into a very simple shoe not only are these things easy to draw but they cut a great silhouette no matter what size he is at um, and these things will just enhance the interestingness of his outerwear um, so the next thing to focus on was his hair and other little details to make him look unique Face details are a major thing that I often forget as an opportunity to make a character look more like an individual, and so on him I decided to give him two moles on his cheek as well as a small scar. Um, putting scars on the face can definitely look a little cliched or crazy, um, but if you have a story for why they're there and if you don't go too nuts with them, they can actually add a lot of mystery or interest to a character, leaving an obvious injury um, or a, a place where your character has been wounded in the past it just naturally adds a little story there and that's something that I always recommend for people to think about don't make your characters look like they were just like <laughs> born yesterday with perfect um, skin and no sign that they've lived a life before the moment that the audience meets them it's really great to have little clues that they have been through things before um, I think it's satisfying for the audience and it also helps you develop a more rich character Make sure not to neglect the props, even if you're not particularly interested in weapons. Don't just give your weapon-wielding character the most boring possible version of a sword or a dagger or a gun. Um, try to put a little bit of effort into it, especially if it's going to be a part of their design and something they use a lot. In this case, I actually got inspired by a old whaling um, sword that I saw in a marine museum. <laughs> I thought it was perfect because this character is a monster hunter and the closest thing we have to monsters in scale are whales. This design was only captured because I actually streamed uh, the first part of drawing it, so sorry there's a few moments where it actually cuts out. 
But as you could see, I was actually looking at old sketches that I did of this character. This character gave me the hardest time um, just because figuring out exactly who she is um, was something I was still working on. And I find when I don't have a super solid idea of necessarily their personality, their limits, their motivations, it's very hard to actually design them. Um, I generally wanted her to look cute and I wanted her to be reminiscent of um, like a video game uh, like adventure kind of girl character. I wanted her to have that sort of like adventure look while also being like just disgustingly cute um, and uh, you know with the whole kind of impractical adventurer's outfit with like the bikini top and the shorts. Um, I ended up not liking the shorts. I kind of went with like a jean material because I feel like I've seen that like bra and jean shorts combination a lot in uh, like fantasy RPGs but in the end I just felt like it was a little bit too like I was focusing too much on the parody of it and not enough on um, how it would affect the end style of the comic itself so I did have to lose those and change them up a bit for it to look more realistically um, like she's in a more old timey uh, more I guess uh, fantasy era um, outfit uh, and for her little prongs on the top of her head. Um, at first I really loved them but after a little bit I started to feel like they were a little bit wrong for her. Um, this character is also a monster hunter and I like the idea of a monster hunter having this sort of like super cutesy rabbity kind of look. But I started to feel like it made her look a little too soft um, because the core idea I had for this character was a person who looks really cute and values like looking cute but actually their personality is really different and I had to kind of show that duality as best as I could. Um, I was also kind of worried she was looking a little bit too much like that uh, like Natsuki from Doki Doki Literature Club especially when her hair was um, pink. I later changed her hair color a little bit so that helped a lot um, but that was definitely a concern I did not want to hear a bunch of people saying it looked like a Doki Doki Literature Club character compromise I ended up making with her hair was to elongate it and make it look even sharper um, almost like fangs or like the um, the parts of a, a spider I forget what it's called it's like their jaws um, but they're not actually jaws but it, it just makes it look a little bit more dangerous a little more venomous like you could read them as cute rabbit ears but you could also read them as these like threatening scorpion tails on either side of her head and that was exactly what I wanted to go for because that's representative of her personality I messed around with the color palette so much because she was just looking a little bit too much like a boring, like, just like couch colors. I don't know, too much beige, too much like very light pink. So I ended up darkening down these areas and this also helped uh, make her look a little more mysterious, which I really wanted. You guys enjoyed watching me go through this process of designing characters for a real actual project. Um, I would really appreciate it if you let me know um, if you're interested in this type of stuff where it's more just like me straight up showing you how I do my job rather than you know a video idea that necessarily was made just for YouTube. I really haven't done a video like this since 2016 when I was starting off the channel. Um, so if you want a blast from the past, you should check out that video. Um, kind of embarrassing, but still uh, definitely very nostalgic. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have a good day and you have fun designing your characters. Thank you so much to my wonderful patrons, including Herbie Envy, Treku, Rodrigo, Neurocherry, Kali Halsey, Kubo, Moo Milk, Alana the Artist, Rylan Parker, Rylan, Kaderia, Something Super, Deadly Nightshade Art, Maria Vasquez, Astral Fox Art, Middle Z, Lily Allure, The Expressive Poker Face, Morrissey Axolotl, Chris Draws, Kai Kieser, Tsubaki, Liliama Hammondtree, Nya Lavali, Angel File, Cutie Pie, Ruin Raincrow, Wayne Water Pearls, Ice Cream Pal, Lion, Nora Cornelson, Cola, Yaboya C, JJ Jade, and of course, Liblibla. Blah, blah.